the subject of prayer is puzzling and confusing to many people. And that is why many people get guilt-stricken when they hear a sermon on prayer, <laughs> because very few people ever feel good or confident about their prayer life. And consequently, they begin to feel guilt. And the problem also what I consider to be adding insult to injury is that there's so many confusing teachings. Today the Apostle John concludes his epistle that we have been looking at for some time now entitled, Life at Its Best. How to Live a Meaningful Life. He concludes it by clarifying, by crystallizing, by making very clear to us what prayer is all about. And he tells us two things. He tells us about confidence in prayer, and he tells us about privilege prayer. He tells us about having confidence in our prayer life. Very few people pray with confidence, and I'm going to explain to you why. You and I are familiar with how the term prayer is used in public, in people in general, or in the media particularly. When there is a crisis somewhere in the world or some problem or some difficulties, you hear people in the media talk about, well, you have our best wishes and prayers. <laughs> and um, I often wonder what they really mean by that. I think most times they really mean is a wishful thinking about the situation. Or like asking a genie to do something magical for you, to grant you your wish. In fact, most people think of prayer the way my children and I used to play a game when they were little. Probably some of you have played that same game. You know, so when, they, when kids were really little, I would put the quarters in my hand. And I'd say, if you can pry my hand open, you'll get it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And so they would sit in my lap, and they... Now, the rule is, as soon as they pry one finger, it cannot be shut again. So they go, Arr! the open one. I made sure I have the coins right there about my thumb, because <laughs> I knew they were going to start with the little finger. Arr! And then they call on somebody else to help them. Come and help me. Arr! I got the second finger open. Arr! They get the third one. And they keep working their way until they get to the coins, and then what happens, they take the coins, push your hand away, and run away with glee. <laughs> and that's fine, because there are kids, and that's a game. <laughs> but the problem is, there are some people, when they get into trouble, this is how they think prayer is. Many people do the same thing with God. God, help me pass my exam. God, help me pass my exam. Well, they pass their exam. And then they come back, and they run away, and they come back, and they say, Oh, God, help me find a job. Help me find a job. Help me find a job. And then they get the job. God, help me find a spouse. Then they run away. Beloved, that is not what prayer is all about. So I want you to turn with me to what John said in chapter 5, verse 14, here's what John said. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. What's that confidence? That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Someone said, this is probably the Bible's most important statement on prayer. But do you know why? Because John the Apostle, who wrote the Gospel of John, heard with his own ears, and he recorded in John 14, 14, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, whatever you ask in my name, I'll grant it to you. Some people 
try to use this verse like they use the American Express gold card with no credit limit. God, give me this God, give me this God, give me this God, give me this. And they ask for all sorts of, ask for the wrong things. They ask with the wrong motive. They ask with the wrong spirit. They ask for selfish and self-serving things. And when their prayers are not answered, they said, where is God who said, ask in my name and I'll answer it? Where does the confidence come from? Where does this boldness in prayer come from? Where does liberty in praying and talking to the Lord come from? I want you to listen carefully, please. It comes from a deep desire to obey God no matter what. It comes from a deep longing to please God. And in the presence of this deep longing desire to please God, we find ourselves asking only for that which is in His will. The Scripture said, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you what? Desires of your heart. Now, I got news for you. I lived long enough to know that most people like to skip the first part. Delight yourself in the Lord. Actually, actually, they wouldn't even mouth it. They go straight. God will give you the desires of your heart. Have you heard people like God will give you the desires of your heart. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What comes first, the horse or the buggy? <laughs> right? The horse. And it says, the horse here, it says, delight yourself in the Lord. That if you don't delight yourself in the Lord, you have no right to expect God to grant you the desires of your heart. Listen carefully. Prayer is not wanting God to see things my way. Prayer is not extracting from God that which I want. Prayer is not cajoling God to do that which He's reluctant to do. No. Confidence in prayer means a friend speaking to a friend. In fact, the word that John uses here in the Greek, parousia, means to speak freely. Freely speaking, like a friend, just delighted in speaking to a friend, opening his or her heart to a friend. That's what it means. It means speaking to God in an unhampered way, in a relaxed way, in an open manner, sure with reverence, sure with respect, sure with submission. In fact, that word is repeated in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, we approach the throne of grace with confidence. Here's that parousia again. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. This confidence, listen to me, this confidence does not come out of arrogance, but because of His graciousness. It's because of who He is and what He's done for us. Do you want to get your prayers answered? Yes. Then listen carefully. Answered prayer have everything to do with our desire to do the will of God. Answered prayer has everything to do with believing that His will for me… You see, most people are afraid of the will of God. They really are. They really are. And they don't want to know it because in case it's something they don't like. But prayer stems from a deep desire, an understanding that God's will for me is for my good and for His glory. When you submit to the will of God, as it's revealed in the Word of God, God doesn't only hear us, He answers us. Someone here may say, well, Michael, I know that I have prayed according to the will of God. I know I prayed according to the Word of God. I did not pray anything contrary to God's Word. And I know that I prayed for the glory of God. But my prayers have not been answered. And I've been praying for a long time. I'm still waiting for an answer. I've been there, and I'm going to testify about this at the very end of the message. So stay tuned. 
Here's what you need to know. God does not have a box on his desk entitled pending. If your prayer is according to the will of God, if your prayer is according to the Word of God, if your prayer is according to the glory of God, God already answered it. He said, wait a minute, Michael. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What do you mean? Are you trying, you're arguing with me? You're telling me that God answered? He has not answered it. Yes, he did. He did not. Yes, he did. He did not. Well, yes, he did. Well, I don't want to be argumentative with you. <laughs> but the fact that you have not seen it and experienced it, it doesn't mean he had not answered it. You say, well, wait, wait a minute. Where do you get that? Ah, from the Word of God. <laughs> In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove to you that when you pray according to the will of God and when you pray consistent with the Word of God, God already answered your prayer. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, God reveals His will to Daniel. Now, this is not you and me say, well, I feel this is according to the will of God. This is revealed. God appeared to him, and he told him, okay? <laughs> There's no doubt on this one. So, Daniel, on the strength of that revealed will of God, he goes into prayer and fasting and mourning and humbling himself before God. And he prays, and he prays, and he fasts. For how long? Three weeks. He gave himself totally to praying according to the revealed will of God. First day, nothing happened. He prays again, cries to the Lord, Lord, you told me. Nothing happened. Third day, nothing happened. Fourth day, nothing happened. End of the week, God, you promised me, and I'm praying on the strength of that revealed will that you have given me. Second week, whatever happened, Lord, I've been praying. Third week, a messenger from the Lord appears to him. Now, remember, Daniel was praying for the revealed will of God. What he already knows God wanted. And so, in chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, a messenger from the Lord appears to him, and here's what he said. Listen carefully. Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. That's another word for being answered. Sometimes in Hebrew language we say heard meaning answered. And I have come in response to them. Oh, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for 21 days. When did the answer to Daniel's prayer take place? Immediately. Immediately. First day, you're right. When did Daniel experience that answer to prayer? Three weeks later. <laughs> and the reason given here, sometimes we don't have reasons, sometimes we have reasons. But the reason is clearly given here that the head demon that is in charge of the Persian kingdom was creating havoc in the heavenly places. It's already been answered, has not been experienced for three weeks. Beloved, let me tell you something. It is not arbitrary that the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 6, 12, that our struggle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Prayer is dependent on the willingness of the person who's praying. Willingness to do what? Willingness to do spiritual battles. Willingness to do spiritual war. 